On the 26th of April, 1986, the worst nuclear power plant disaster in history occurred at the Chernobyl plant in the Ukraine. Chernobyl was labeled as a level 7, the maximum classification on the international nuclear event scale. At the core of the blown out reactor, and buried under 14 meters of rubble, the graphite surrounding the nuclear fuel burns and melts the uranium. The radioactive fallout is going to be a hundred times greater than the combined power of the two atomic bombs dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Years later, on the 11th of March, 2011, the Fukushima meltdown reawakened public awareness regarding the ever-present dangers of nuclear power. So we're about 270, uh, 276, so we're maxing out around 280 or so. And remember, 30 is what's normal for this location. Now they're disputing that this isn't the cesium-137. They're saying this is radium and other things that naturally occur in the environment. Whatever it is, it's abnormally high. With the recent earthquake activity stirring in the ring of fire, the Diablo Canyon power plant located near Avila Beach in San Luis Obispo, resting near not one but four fault lines, is a clear and present danger. The second fault, known as the Hosgri Fault, was only discovered after the plant's completion. In November of 1927, the Hosgri Fault generated a 7.1 magnitude earthquake 10 miles offshore. A 2013 document filed by former Nuclear Regulatory Commission Inspector Michael Peck insisted on closing down Diablo until the commission determined whether the plant's equipment could survive higher seismic stress levels. In 1981, Diablo was incorrectly retrofitted when employees failed to reverse the plans for the twin reactors. Regardless, the Nuclear Regulation Commission approved the safety of Diablo's monstrosity of incompetence. Diablo has a seismic monitoring and safety system ready to shut it down immediately in the event of significant ground motion. The motion is detected by sensors in the ground and provides three-dimensional data on seismic conditions. But that won't stop the potential damage unleashed by the fuel rods as witnessed during the Fukushima debacle. Of course, Pacific Gas and Electric would like you to believe this ticking time bomb is good for jobs, energy consumption of its two million recipients, and the way forward as old man coal is aggressively shut down. So if somebody wants to build a coal power plant, they can. It's just that it will bankrupt them because they're going to be charged a huge sum for all that uh, greenhouse gas that's being emitted. But the voices opposed are many. After President Richard Nixon called for construction of 1,000 nuclear plants by the year 2000, 1,900 anti-nuclear movement protesters were arrested in 1981 during a 10-day civil disobedience blockade of the Diablo Canyon power plant. With the main gate cleared and the last blockader in jail, Pacific Gas and Electric made final preparations to start the reactor. But then, at the last moment, PG&E publicly admitted a grave mistake. There are two reactors at Diablo mirror images of each other. The blueprints for units one and two had gotten mixed up and the earthquake supports for the cooling pipes, the same cooling system designed to prevent a meltdown, had been installed backwards. It was the first of hundreds of mistakes discovered later, all made on the two and a half billion dollar structure described by the Nuclear Regulatory Commission as the most highly analyzed building in the world. Today, most locals and tourists are completely unaware of the passion Californians vented against the nuclear energy mafia just 33 years ago. PG&E's planned ocean explosions is creating a lot of concern for marine mammals. John? It's planned for a 40-mile stretch of the ocean centered on the Diablo Canyon nuclear power plant. From about here, San Simeon, down to south of Pismo Beach, and out about a dozen miles. Beginning next month, 12 days of blasting the water here every 15 seconds with super loud sound. As I first told you 17 months ago, the Diablo Canyon nuclear power plant could be at risk from unknown undersea earthquake faults. The state called for this study and we're absolutely committed to working with the community and the environment. 
A ship would tow an air gun array. Bursts of 250 decibel sound penetrate the ocean floor. Echoes reveal faults, but the sound can also hurt marine mammals. We'll have trained species observers. We'll have safe mammal protection zones. Federal agencies say there'll be only temporary effects on marine life. But I've obtained this state environmental impact report. It says that there'll be significant and unavoidable harm to perhaps hundreds of marine mammals. We've seen beachings of uh, marine mammals around the world following uh, large noises and acoustic testing in the oceans. Environmentalists say the state used better and more recent science, that there are also better, less risky methods to explore those faults. You could get more reliable data on the safety of the plant by going at it another way than blasting the ocean. Public comment period on this project is open for the next three weeks. Reporting live, Health and Science Editor John Fowler, KTVU Channel 2 News. As the Fukushima disaster deepens three years later into a planet-wide emergency, with massive continuous daily radioactive emissions into the air, ocean, and biosphere, while officials deny the reality and risks, the nuclear industry fights to stop its renaissance from being rolled back in the U.S. and around the world. And citizens begin to understand the California-Fukushima connection. A new documentary from award-winning filmmakers counters nuclear industry lies and cover-ups. It tells the story of Southern California's recent successful campaign to rid itself of one of its nuclear threats. Environmentalists have tried for decades to close San Onofre down, and this morning, word from the Associated Press that Southern California Edison says it will be closing the troubled San Onofre nuclear power plant for good. Ah, oh, thank you. What a day this is. I can't describe the emotions and uh, the relief to know that we're past this huge hurdle. We don't have to worry about 8 million people being exposed to a meltdown because of experimenting with the broken reactor. This has ramifications around the country. This is a seismic event in the nuclear industry. It looks at the people, organizations, strategies, and factors that forced a powerful corporation to bend to the public will. It traces the little-known history of the nuclear-free California movement. We need a mass movement again, like we had in the 70s and the 80s. All the alternative energies are zooming ahead, and the rest of the world has picked up on it, and we don't want to be left behind. In California, you have four reactors, like Fukushima, that are on earthquake faults and that are in the tidal wave zone, two at Diablo Canyon, two at San Onofre, right on the ocean. Those nukes need to be shut down. We can do it. You can do it. A local story with global implications. It documents California's awakening to the deadly risks to human rights, public safety, the economy, and all future generations posed by nuclear technology despite fierce industry attempts at cover-up. There's information that shows that Edison knew that these steam generators were defective before they were installed, and yet they installed them anyways. And in the process, they blew it. They blew it in a big way. They blew it, and the smoking gun is this big hulk of a nuclear power plant down on the beach leaking radioactivity into the community. And yet Edison is insisting on restarting this thing without fixing it first. I finally found my dream location uh, to, re to retire in, gorgeous beaches, great weather, and now in one swoop, San Onofre could just wipe that out. When I asked the sheriff there, if there were to be some, God forbid, some tragedy, you know, how could people get away? She said, the highway, and you can't move on that highway in rush hour. A meltdown will make Southern California a permanent 
zone where nobody can live. And these are fundamental issues that are being dealt with not only here in Southern California, but are also issues that are being dealt with in reactor communities around the country. The idea that California would be nuclear free uh, when all we hear is that there's some form of nuclear renaissance going on in the US would be a massive blow to the nuclear industry, both in the US but also globally. It's an empowering story of activists, nuclear experts, public officials, whistleblowers, journalists and extraordinary citizens facing up to the threat of Fukushima fallout while working to prevent potential Fukushima-like catastrophes here at home. It's also the story of the growing solidarity between Japanese and U.S. activists as they unite to challenge the global nuclear establishment. The whole world is watching Fukushima. We need the United Nations at the General Assembly level to take action at Fukushima. The government of Japan cannot do it. The electric power company cannot do it. We need the resources of our species, the best engineers, the best scientists, and all the money in the world to stop this horrible disaster at Fukushima and all the other nuclear plants around the earth. This transition to a renewable-based economy must start now. The easy part is over. Keeping track of what's happening uh, with San Onofre and this power plant for the next few years it will be a lot of work. There's no way in the world that we are going to allow this nuclear power plant to become a nuclear waste dump. We, we really need, I think at this point, to focus on Diablo Canyon and let's make California nuclear free. We got the final wake-up call in Fukushima and we need to phase out and shut down the 104 reactors in America. I will put it very bluntly, we need to kill them before they kill us. Shut down the California-Fukushima connection. Go to the Remix button, hit the Remix button. That way you'll have this video. Otherwise, you know, YouTube's just going to control us, guys, and it's, it's really bad.
PG&E is, is making a full frontal assault here around Diablo Canyon because they feel really um, unsure about the future of Diablo in the face of the closing of San Onofre. There's a lot more pressure here now on PG&E to shut down Diablo because of the new information we have about the earthquake fault. Diablo Canyon nuclear reactors, of which there are two, uh, that are 11 miles from where we're sitting right now are holding approximately, well, six plus million pounds of highly radioactive waste that's stored in pools that are four times as densely packed as they were uh, designed for originally at the intersection of at least 13 earthquake faults. And three earthquake faults having recently been discovered, have now been analyzed that they, they converge with the shoreline fault. And these, two, these three faults together, the shoreline, the San Luis Bay fault, and the Los Osos fault, if they happen to have a simultaneous eruption, which probably would happen if there were an earthquake, they would all go. They could create a larger ground motion than the plant is designed for. Fukushima f fell to a one-two punch, tsunami and earthquake. Diablo Canyon is also vulnerable to a one-two punch. The earthquake could take away the normal supply of power. A fire, because that plant doesn't meet fire protection regulations, could do the same damage that the tsunami did at Fukushima. The difference between Diablo Canyon today and Fukushima on March 10, 2011, the day before the accident, is that their luck ran out. Our vulnerabilities at, at Diablo Canyon haven't been exploited, so that's why we, we've not experienced disaster there. We need to take steps to protect Californians from the risk at Diablo Canyon, not put our heads in the sand 
and pretend that it can't happen here. When it does happen, it won't be an accident. When you allow a plant that's unsafe to continue operating, that's negligence or manslaughter or something like that. That's not an accident. It's the same reason that tavern owners can be held responsible for sending a drunk dr out on the roads. The Nuclear Regulatory Commission would be responsible for a, new, for a problem at Diablo Canyon when it allows that to plant to run, knowing it doesn't have adequate seismic protection, knowing it doesn't, it's not protected against fire protection regulations. Again, they're gambling with the lives of Californians, and that's not the role they should be playing. What we should do is shut that plant down, both of them, both of those reactors. Now, we shouldn't put up with it. It's wrong, it's illegal, it's immoral, it's, it cannot go on like this if we want to have a future for our children. Okay, question. So you're working with him? Yeah. Okay, cool. Next question. Yes. Hey, um, you're, you're, you're second. You're first. Yes. I was going to ask you uh, about the, um, the toxic waste uh, trash, the size of California heading for the West Coast. What yeah. You, I want to ask your opinion about that. You mean in the ocean in from the, ocean. the tsunami? Yeah. I want to ask, uh, I'm trying to get this, this information out, and I want, I want to, I'm trying to, as hard as I can, a lot of people just don't want to hear it, but. Um, People surfing, swimming in the ocean out here in Santa Monica and all over the place, are they more, are they getting more radiation? I mean, is that track? I mean, just tell me about that. I don't know how much radiation will be collected on the trash, as you call it. I don't call it, I call it rubbish, I suppose. <laughs> That's an American word, trash. Yeah. Um, there's a hell of a lot coming towards you, huge, huge amounts, because you saw the tsunami come in and take it out. And of course, some radioactive fallout will have fallen on that, but I'm much, much more worried about the radiation in the ocean. Woods Hole has said it, it's far more than Chernobyl ever was. They've never seen or contemplated anything like this, and it will be reaching you quite soon, I think, in the ocean currents and the fish. And the fish swim thousands of miles. The EPA is not testing your fish caught on the west coast, it should be testing your fish routinely. I would be very cautious about, I don't know how, how long it takes a fish to get here, but um, it's now a year and the fish will be radioactive and I don't think I'd be surfing. Be vegetarian. <laughs> well, well the soil yeah. is now the there was, yeah. Can you give me an update on Diablo? Diablo, yeah, well, you know, that's sitting on an earthquake. <laughs> what else can I say? I mean, it's pathetic. Diablo and San Onofre both have built on earthquakes. Haven't you seen enough of an earthquake to see what it does? You also are in a tsunami area. What update do you need except to close it down? <laughs> Help us. No, I, well, I'm helping We you. have to do it. Look, I, can, I live in Australia. I'm only one person. I mean, I'd march in there and take over the control room, shut the thing down if I could, and that's what you should be doing. Have courage. Right. How do you, on, on April 28th, there is going to be, in honor of the anniversary of Chernobyl, there is going to be a demonstration at San Onofre, on the south side of San Onofre. You get to drive past not only the power plant itself, but also all the police and all the helicopters and all the rest that's going to be there. But it will start at 12.30 and go till 3 o'clock in the afternoon. You are all invited to take your rage and your outrage and come and demonstrate there and bring whoever you can. Last time we had for uh, Fukushima, we had 200 people. We would like to swell that number up. If you can possibly show up, please do. Information on sananofresafety.org. I'm not sure the demonstrations will do the trick these days. Yes. I think you need to occupy the thing. Now, you won't be able to because that's dangerous and you could cause a meltdown, and it's easy to melt a nuclear power plant down. I could do it within a day. But you've got to think of more creative things, and I think you need to think of Greenpeace. They're clever. They always get in the media and then they say why are you climbing this tower 
why are you inside this reactor? And then they can tell you. You've got to think of ways to attract the media. They're bored with demons. I mean, I'm not putting you down, <coughs> per se, but I'm thinking as a physician, what works, you see? And you have to work, treat the patient with what will cure the patient. So you have to think, what is going to turn this state around? And Jerry Brown isn't a bad man. I've known Jerry for many years. Get on to Jerry Brown yeah. and educate yeah. him. Right. You know, nail one of his feet to the floor, and, and you know, yeah. yeah. Once you shut it down, what is the best regimen for what you do with it after it's shut Very good down? question. You have to let it cool down radiologically for about 50 years. Oh my God. Yes. The other thing I need to say is that there's a hell of a lot of spent fuel, yes. very radioactive fuel, yes. at both those reactors at San Onofre and also Diablo Canyon. There's more cesium in the cooling pool at Pilgrim Nuclear Power Plant in Massachusetts than there is in all the fallout from all the nuclear tests that have ever occurred in the history of the nuclear age in one cooling pool. Those cooling pools have to be cooled continuously, and if they're not, they too will melt down, like they worried about Unit 4 at Fukushima. So that's radioactive waste. Your government doesn't... You, the nuclear industry is social... It's a communist industry. You pay for it. And then the utilities get the reactor when it's built, and they earn a million dollars a day selling you electricity. But you pay for the insurance, your house isn't insured, you are not insured against nuclear accident, you built the thing, you mined the uranium, you enriched the uranium, you will pay for the decommissioning, but you'll be dead and so will I. Then when it's cooled down, you have to cut it apart by remote control using robots, and then you have to bury it somewhere because it's radioactive waste, so they might take to Hanford or Savannah River, which is like descending into Hades, they're so incredibly radioactive. And then you've got the radioactive waste. There's nowhere to put it, although we have passed a law in Australia that we're going to bury radioactive waste on tribal Aboriginal land <laughs> against the Aborigines' wishes. And Halliburton built the railway line going from the port of Darwin down to the road, and that's Cheney. And we may become the radioactive waste dump of the world. You've got about 70,000 tonnes of radioactive waste with nowhere to put it. And it's dangerous because if you lose the cooling water, the pools could melt down, not just the reactor, at Diablo Canyon, at, you know, San Onofre. And what, and what I want to say is that the waste will leak into your food supplies for the rest of time. And I predict over generations, people waking up in the morning, the food already radioactive, the breast milk radioactive. The baby's been born deformed and there are homes in, Fuji in Chernobyl now with pictures here of children so grossly deformed we've never seen anything like it in paediatrics. Nancy, I'm going to show it to you because she's a paediatric <laughs> neurologist and I want you to pass these pictures around so everyone can see what nuclear power really means. Cancer at 6 instead of 60. That's what nuclear power means. And the accidents never end, never end. And anyway, Na Nancy, pass that round and everyone's to look and give me back the book. Yeah. Fukushima resting right over those mountains. I don't know what you're talking about. Experts would have us just bury our heads in the sand, but some are already preparing for the inevitability of America's Fukushima. If Diablo blows, nobody's staying around to use it. I've, I've actually got backpacks in my car, you know, for heading out. Preparedness, I think, is very important. Yeah. But the whole idea that they're going to sound the sirens and we're all going to head north, it just won't work. Yeah. Northeast. So yeah. I wish it wasn't there, but it is, and maybe they'll d deactivate it, and that would be fine with me. Yeah, absolutely. So, I yeah. think it's great how uh, the citizens on our own can be prepared, um, yet, you know, we're asking our government basically to take care of us, and they're, you know, telling us to look the other way. Yeah. And how can you do that when all of this is at risk? Well, it always comes in the limelight once there's an earthquake. Mm -hmm. So the Snapa earthquake has made everybody kind of think about it again. You know, that a good earthquake would cause the plant to blow and uh, would want to get out of here. When you look around and you see all of this beauty, all these families, all these people, how does that make you feel knowing that they're okay with a potential 
Fukushima situation here in America. We know we know we couldn't all get out. You know, they say head north, head east, northeast once the plant warns us. But you know that you couldn't do that. The freeway would be jammed. That's why, you know, we know we could go across the Santa Maria River bed and head south. I raised seven children in this town and I taught them all to run home no matter what the school told them because we were going to hop in the car and get out somehow. They weren't going to wait for school buses. But yeah, it's a big problem. They say we provide 20% of California's power at that plant, but I think they named it Diablo for a reason. As the purported Chinese curse goes, May you live in interesting times. Having finished this week's summary, I will now fall into a dreamless state of unconsciousness for the next six days until I'm needed again.